What's up guys, I'm Garrett Shearman, and welcome to Discover This. So today, I know you guys don't have time, neither do I, so let's just do this. So, today's episode is all about pirates, or more specifically, buccaneers. Now, pirates have been part of the mainstream media for many years now, with beloved characters dominating the big screen, you know, like Captain Jack Sparrow and all that. However, as entertaining as these films may be, they're not exactly historically accurate. You know, pirates such as Edward Teach, also known as Blackbeard, didn't really exist in the Caribbean until the end of a very long, long history of what I'd like to call pirate-like behavior from another group of seafarers, or a variety of group of seafarers, who like I said, exhibited pirate-like behavior. So, first came privateers like Sir Francis Drake. They're essentially given permission to be a pirate in and around the Caribbean around the early to middle 17th century, so around 1630 is when they really started to kick off. Then there came the buccaneers, and the buccaneers were essentially the same thing, but they were notoriously wild, and they had another characteristic that really defined them that I'll get to in just a little bit. So, pirates came last. They were given no permission to do anything whatsoever, but they still exude the incredibly lawless and wild characteristics that the Buccaneers exhibited. So, everybody loves Captain Morgan, obviously. His real name was Henry Morgan, and yes, he really existed. One of the most famous parts of all time, right? Well, actually, that is completely wrong. Henry Morgan was, or Captain Morgan, was not a pirate. He was a Buccaneer, you see? And he was one of the most successful buccaneers of all time, though he was notoriously bloodthirsty and committed a variety of all kinds of horrific atrocities, such as burning down an entire Caribbean beautiful artistic city down to the ground just out of spite and hatred of the Spanish, which hatred of the Spanish is a common theme that we will be discussing throughout today. I don't exactly know why, but we'll get to that in a second. So... I really want to focus today on the Buccaneers because I feel like they're underplayed in history and throughout, you know, all the courses. Pretty much all you hear about is pirates, unless you had an awesome history teacher who told you about Buccaneers and privateers. But today we're really going to focus on Buccaneers and one Buccaneer in particular. So who were they? They were French hunters who smoked boar and cattle meat and something called a boucan. So that's where the word actually comes from. It, it was originally in French, boucanier, and that in English got translated to buccaneer. The word buccaneer itself literally means a barbecuer because they smoked meat. They were incredible hunters, incredible with a musket, really honestly a dead shot, but they made little to no money, obviously. So eventually these buccaneers found that they can make a lot more money shooting Spanish than pigs. And this is where the word buccaneer or buccaneer started to really refer to the raiders who would plunder Spanish ships and settlements. Most of the time, they were English and French, sometimes Dutch. You know, whenever they wanted to get on the action, they weren't really around in the Caribbean all that much. But I don't know what it was about these old school buccaneers, privateers, and whoever, but they just absolutely hated the Spanish like with a passion, it's actually, it's, it's pretty funny. In some definitions of the word buccaneer, it actually refers to people who raided Spanish, who literally raided the Spanish. I, I don't know, I think that's kind of hilarious if you think about it. I mean, why them? It, it had something to do, I think, with the black legend, which is, you know, the Spanish were the first one to really colonize the Caribbean and the New World, and it was called the Black Legend because it essentially said that they just went around just completely and utterly decimating the inhabitants of the Caribbean, who they called Indians, but really just Caribbean natives, and were completely different than the Indians. And so that's kind of where the Black Legend came from, but as it is, it is a legend, though of course they did commit some atrocities, you know, they weren't perfect in the New World, but just the, I mean, jeez, these people, these buccaneers just hated, I mean, hated the Spanish. And there was never a more bloodthirsty, Spanish-hating man than Francois Olenay. And that's who we're really going to be talking about today. So, Olenay's is one of the most interesting marauders of all time, and he is infamously notched in the pages of history, not because of his incredible triumphs, 
and successes against the Spaniards, though there were many of those. No, he's instead famous due to the atrocities that he committed as a captain of Buccaneers and how horrible of a human being he really was. So he's actually known for how horrible he was. He's like Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. So there have been a great deal of horrible pirate-like characters in fiction that have specifically been based upon him, yet he's not nearly as famous as Blackbeard or Captain Morgan. So that's why I really want to talk about him today because he's just fascinating. So who exactly was he and what did he do? Let's start at the beginning. Olanese was a French man brought to the Caribbean when he was young and he came from France and he was made into an indentured servant, which was, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's essentially a slave with a term of end and a contract. He took up with the Buccaneers at a young age, and he was so courageous and just ridiculous in what he did that he was granted to be a ship captain early on. There's all kind of crazy stories of him, like when he, he slid under his friends, his dead comrades, and smeared himself with their blood and guts and just like crept under them. And it was like really, really just ridiculous to avoid the capture of the Spaniards. But I love that story. But I'm going to stick to the most brutal and entertaining of all these stories to make it, you know, nice and concise on why this guy's so famous, well, to a certain select group of historians. Olanese wanted badly to sack the port of De Los Cayos, which I think is south of Havana somewhere. These towns, or the town's governor sent a military ship and into the harbor to ask everybody if they had seen or heard of Olanese walking around there because some word got to him. And eventually they actually came up to Olanese's ship and they were like, hey, like, have you seen Olanese? Have you seen him around here? And Olanese, you know, he just looked at him and he was like, yeah, yeah, he's got it here. He's gone. He's way, he's lost. You know, you guys scared the bejesus out of him. He's out of here. So obviously Olanese had to jump on him and he quickly chased them under the deck with his crew and he led them up. This is a direct quote I'm reading now. He, at this point, Olenes let them come up one after the other, and as they came through the hatch, struck off their heads. He literally killed every man and personally sent a message back to the governor saying he would do the same to him. Just think about that. He was waiting for them to come out, you know, you know, like scared and everything, you know, what's going on? And then bam, off with the head. So he had a fancy new ship because this was a nice militia ship, and he was just using a little canoe for pretty much his endeavors at this point. So he went back to Tortuga, which was the pirate, or I'm sorry, not pirate, buccaneer capital of the time. And he quickly assembled what became to be the biggest buccaneer fleet the world had ever seen. He set out four months later with a force of 660 men to raid the towns of Maracaibo, Gibraltar, and Puerto Rico. And the Buccaneers whose training literally came from shooting pigs just just absolutely demolished the Spanish. Like, I mean, horrible. After one of the sieges, they counted 700 dead Spanish and only 40 dead Buccaneers. Like, like really? Really Spanish. These were trained military men. These were professionals. I guess the Buccaneers were professionals too, but they were... They were the low life. They were the thieves. They were the criminals, and they were just tearing through them. So, Olanese rounded the prisoners as he often did, and he put them to the rack, which is an essential, you know, it's a torture method where they grab your arms and legs and they just stretch you until you know these muscles start to tear. You start to dislocate everything, and essentially it'll kill you. So, and this was always the case. You know, I don't know why these prisoners just never talked. But they didn't talk, and they said that they weren't going to tell him anything. So, you know, he just you know, rolled his eyes, walked over to him with his cutlass, and just started, choom, choom, just hacking at him with the cutlass, just wildly, just tearing through all of them, just like by himself. And his crew was just standing there like, whoa, like, we're not going to mess with this guy. Like, jeez him. Needless to say, the other prisoners told him whatever he wanted. There's actually a lot of stories just like this where he would just cut through people. So after the expedition, the Buccaneers returned a lot richer than they had been, and they went back to Tortuga and immediately started doing what pirates do best, and that being drinking, gambling, spending all their money on women. 
and just living a life of savagery and debauchery. So within, let's say, two weeks tops, it could have been a mere two days, everybody was out of money again. All the Buccaneers with their immense wealth, they returned with 260,000 pieces of eight, which is a lot of money because it's literally a piece of gold. They returned shortly after and spent everything. They were broke again. So, Olenaise being the shifty man that he was, he rounded up 700 men and set sail for Cuba to do more plundering. They immediately started burning down towns and just committing atrocities against the Spanish, taking prisoners. And again, when the prisoners didn't talk, Olenaise would just go about hacking them to pieces, just like he always loved to do. And there's actually primary sources telling of him literally licking the blade, licking the blood off his blade and just looking at the prisoners, just like glaring at them. You know, he had like, just gross, you know, he probably had really bad breath, just smelled awful, kind of gross. So one of my favorite stories like this, it's just so ridiculous, is when Olenaise had two prisoners lead him directly into an ambush when he was really trying to get them to lead them to a town. So he pulled them aside and was like, hey, what was that all about? You, you know, you got any more of these lying around? And they said yes. So then Olenaise asked them if there was another route available. And they said no. Now, this is a direct quote that I'm reading of what happened next. Olenaise, being possessed of a devil's fury, ripped open one of the prisoners with his cutlass, tore the living heart out of his body, gnawed at it, and then hurled it at the face of one of the others, saying, show me another way or I will do the same to you. It's actually a primary source read word for word. Ridiculous. Like I said, there's a long list of stories where Olenaise and his men just completely wrecked through the Spaniards and got a lot of booty out of it. But I mean, come on, this kind of stuff couldn't last forever. So this is the part of the story where the end began to loom over Olenaise. And his days of plundering would eventually end in a story as hilarious and ridiculous as all the other ones. It only fits a man of his stature to have just the most horrible and sadistically humorous death that could have befit him. So, fast forward a couple months. Olenaise had just been wrecking through the Spanish, you know, collecting a lot of money, sending it back to Tortuga, and, you know, it didn't really increase anything for him because all he ever did was get bigger ships to continue the plundering. It's he was going to plunder until he died, which is exactly what he did. So, like I said, fast forward a couple months. Olenaise is still rummaging a little off of Cuba, and he runs his big ship he had at this point aground on a reef. And his crew had to camp out on an island with no escape. So what they did was they started taking apart the boat piece by piece, and they spent a good couple of months there before anything happened. So one of his friendly old buccaneer buddies took a Spanish prisoner and went for a stroll on, you know, this beautiful paradise, it seemed, Caribbean island with just a musket and looking for food. And what did they find? Boom! Cannibals. The buccaneers screamed like a girl and left the Spaniard, who was apparently a little fat and couldn't run fast. So, like, he was out of there. Olenaise's men went looking for the Spaniard and a fire... And I'm sorry, and found a fire along with the bones and a half-eaten hand. Which is like, ew. So they captured a few of the so-called Indians, as they said, though they weren't Indians. And as they had them prisoner tied up next to the campsite, they just didn't say a single word. You know, they were asking them questions, trying to give them, offer them things, because they had never seen these people before. They were like, whoa, what the, like, what the hell? And they just didn't say a single word, even to each other. And they just stared, like, creepily at nothing. So they eventually let them go. They were like, we don't want to deal with these people. And Olenaise had enough. He was like, not dealing with this. So his men drew lots to see who would go out on the longboat they had been constructing out of the pieces of the ship. And uh, so, of course, Olenaise was one of the people who drew lots, and they were off. But... At this point, it was just all over for him. His luck really started to run out when he hit into the reef, and so this was just over for him. They continued further up a river that they found in the island and were eventually set upon by more cannibals where Olenaise was befittingly, just as he had done so many times, and even licked the blood from the sword 
He was literally hacked to pieces and roasted limb by limb as his crew of buccaneers ran away like scared little girls. Direct quote here. This was the end of a man who had spilt so much guiltless blood and committed so many grisly atrocities. And I think it further said somewhere in there as a direct quote that God had finally punished him for everything that he had done. Wow. So, there you have it. The story of Francois Olenay's one of probably just the worst bloodthirsty men of all time against a particular group to the Spanish, and you just you just wonder why. You know, you never are given the satisfaction of an answer why he hated them so much, but I think that just adds to the morbid hilarity of the whole thing. I don't know. But anyway, that's all for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Please remember to like and share the video and let us know in the comments if you have any ideas for future episodes or what you liked, what you didn't like. Let us know. We're more than happy to get back to you guys. We encourage it. Please, like I said, like and share this video and let us what you think for future episodes. Once again, I'm Garrett Shearman from Luck Crew Productions and from all of us here, we hope you enjoyed. See you next time.